Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 224. Today I'm going to talk about The Witches, which is a game from Mayfair, uh, designed by Martin Wallace, and it's set in the Discworld universe, uh, written there by Terry Pratchett. And, and this is a follow-up, uh, to some senses, to uh, Discworld Ankh Morpork, uh, which is a game I quite enjoy and I've never reviewed. Uh, I probably should, maybe I will here in the next couple of days. Uh, and it's a game actually that has recently uh, been hitting the table, not because Witches was coming out, it just kind of happened. And uh, so this is a game I do enjoy anyway, and uh, so I was definitely curious to see how Witches would turn out. It is definitely, uh, you know, on the lighter side of things, kind of like uh, Ankh Morpork is. And uh, this one is a little, a lot different though than Ankh Morpork. So let me just show you how it works, and I'll come back and tell you what I think. Okay, I've got the game here set up for three players. There's a couple of things to take note. Uh, the players are represented by these little witch hats here and you're going to start the game by placing them in empty spots. Now the game is going to be seated with these problem tiles here and you can see here we have purple ones. We've got uh, five of them face down and these here uh, you can see this is the basically the skill check that you're going to need to pass basically by rolling dice and playing some of these cards and these are going to be face down and this is the number of points you're going to get here. And then you're also going to have 10 of these, uh, basically these easy problem tiles here, a little bit lower skill check and victory point value. These are set out in fixed spaces, but they're set out randomly every game. And then in the bottom right hand side of the board, we have these little spots here. And these are going to basically be dealt out uh, differently for each player count. So you've got one, two, three, four. And this is basically telling us, okay, you've got two easy ones here that are going to be face up and then you're going to have to see the darker one there. You're going to have two of those uh, face down. So you're going to set these out and these sort of act as a timer because every turn a new one of these is going to be placed out uh, moving down the stacks left to right as the game progresses. So this is basically the number of rounds is going to vary based on player count. So each player is going to get a little board for themselves and you have sort of a color coding here matching the different witch hats on the board and each player has a different special ability there. Now when you capture or defeat these problem tiles you're going to put these in stacks here. So you can see there's basically two squares there. So you're going to put these in stacks of two and you have a row here for your easy tiles and then a row here for your hard tiles. And the way that that works is Defeating the easy problems is going to increase your hand size. So normally you have a hand size of three, but for every two that you defeat, your hand size goes up to a maximum of seven. And then as you defeat the hard problems, you're going to get a little plus one. So every two hard problem tiles gives you plus one when attempting to solve a further problem. And everybody has this. This is the same. And then everybody has a different individual ability. So to start the game, players are going to get three of these cards here. And then again, as the game progresses, you may get a bigger hand size. So let's talk a little bit about what these cards do. Uh, there's a couple of different things to them. Now the first thing you're going to do every turn is you're going to flip up the top card of the deck here. And then you're going to look at the bottom spot here. So all of the bottoms of these cards here define an area on the board. So every turn you're going to flip over one of these and then take the leftmost and topmost of the problem tiles and then put that into an empty location. Now. If it happens that you go to put it in a location where there's a witch, you just basically draw another card and see if you can place that legally. If there already is a problem tile, then you're going to place sort of a crisis marker here. So we can add this onto it, and that's going to increase the difficulty of it uh, by two there. Now one of the ways that the game can end in a global defeat for all the players is if you ever run out of these crisis markers. So that's something you want to keep in mind during the game. So after you've done that, you've placed maybe, let's say we'll place this one here, and then now you get two actions, and that's basically two movements. Now normally on a movement, you can move two spaces. So you can see here, we've got these different spaces here with the different paths. So if I was the yellow witch up here, I could move one, two, and then try to deal with this problem. So you can move up to two spots normally, and then try to take an action. There's a couple different actions you can do. But if you had a problem tile in the way, let's say I was here, then I have to stop at that problem tile. So let's just talk about how you're going to deal with these problems because you're going to spend the majority of the game doing that. So let's say we wanted to come here and then we're going to cure uh, this fever here. So the interesting part about the game is these green ones are basically sort of your everyday problems. You know, we have death, we have fever, we have sick sheep, sick pigs, 
and then you're going to get into these harder ones which are more like different characters so you've got elves invading you've got this bad character here Vlad the magpie and different things like that so as you kind of work your way up you know getting a greater hand size by completing some of these easier ones then you're going to start tackling some of these different characters and failure for some of these will have more drastic effects so how do you defeat one of these things well the first thing you're going to do is you can see there's four dice here and it's basically a six-sided die and there's no one but there's a little cackle symbol there and that actually counts as zero so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to arrive there you're going to roll two of these dice like so and so if you roll pretty good there that's an 11 so we wouldn't really have to worry too much about this because you know this is a seven uh, and you're basically just trying to achieve that so you're always going to have to roll at least two dice and then you can start playing cards to help out uh, your die roll so let's say we had rolled low there or something like that so there's some symbols on the tops of the cards here so the cards are going to broken into some different things you've got the area at the bottom which again is going to deal out the uh, problem tiles and you have the symbols at the top and then you have the special effect of the card so the effects or the icons they're going to have you know bonuses for you during your sort of little combat or your proficiency check here are these little uh, magical stars here or these headology symbols here now if you play a card after you have to do this after you uh, roll the dice you can play the card for the headology symbol or you can play it for the magic symbol so the headologies are going to basically add one plus one to your die roll the magic symbols are going to add plus two but every time you play a card that has the magic symbol you're going to have to take one of these cackle tokens now you don't want to take too many of these cackle tokens here because once these run out then you're going to have to start basically dealing these out eventually so if you take a cackle token and you or you have to take a cackle token and there aren't any in the display to take then you're going to take it from whoever has the most now if you have the most then you have to take one of these markers here and this is basically going to give you uh, you can see this here uh, minus one at the end of the game there so getting back to encountering the problem you're always going to roll two dice and then you're going to possibly play the cards for these symbols here and then you're going to have to roll two dice again now even if you uh, you don't need to you still have to roll these because you may get a cackle token on the die there and then be forced again to take a cackle token so you still got to go through the exercise of rolling the die usually there's some effects that you can get away with uh, stopping the encounter there now if you notice here you can see the cards also have different effects now you can play these anytime on your turn uh, you know and a lot of these will let you like this one says you can re-roll one or both sets of your dice uh, if you fail to solve a problem and then you run away instead like that so uh, you know discard two cackle counters so you can play these as much as you want there uh, and these, these are going to have different effects there now the other thing to keep in mind is some of these have this power of three so anytime during the encounter here if you play three cards that have the power of three and they're different people then you can immediately defeat that encounter and this is especially handy you know when you're fighting some of these harder encounters that have a higher difficulty level so it's worth noting that you can't no longer play cards for the symbol at the top of the card after you have rolled it again so you can only play those for the symbol after that first die roll you can't play it you know on this card again to add you know if you just needed two more points after that second die roll the symbols can only be played in between the die rolls and then the effects again like I said can be played at any time now if you fail an encounter if you don't meet the uh, required number there then you have to basically retreat to an empty area now if you fail an easy problem you're going to take one of these cackle uh, tokens here and if you fail certain of these uh, harder problem tiles there's a little sheet here and explains uh, some of the different failures that will happen here for some of these different guys here so a lot of these sometimes they'll send you over to uh, the dungeon over there uh, there's a bunch of different uh, you know effects that will happen now one thing to keep in mind is if you ever have three face-up elf tiles there's a few different types of elves if you ever have three face up at the end of somebody's turn then all the players will lose as well so after you've done that you've done two actions because you can move and then uh, you know do an encounter move and do another encounter then at the end of the turn you're basically going to draw back up to your hand size and again that's dictated by uh, these here so normally have a hand size of three up to seven now there's a couple other things you can do on your turn first regarding the movement you can see some of these have a little broomstick a uh, little witch right in the broomstick there and anytime that you need to move you can play this and then basically travel to any empty location there and that even happens when you run away so if you have to run away and there's nowhere to go you can play the broomstick and then kind of go wherever you want 
Now the other thing you can do is if you end your spot in the same spot as another witch, you can basically call it have T. And when you have T, then the player whose turn it is can discard three of these cackle counters, and then the other witches in that spot can discard two if they want or if they have them. And that's pretty much the game. You're basically going to be kind of flying around the board trying to solve these different problems. The two drastic ways that the game can end in a loss for the players is, again, is if you run out of these crisis counters or if you get three elves face up. Normally the game's going to end once you go through all of these and then you're going to play out that last round. And you're going to just total up all the points that everybody has on the different markers here. And uh, like I said, you're basically going to be trying to get the easy ones and fill up and get your hand size up so that you can have, you know, more impactful turns. And then as you start to defeat some of the harder ones, that you're going to hopefully make it a little bit easier on yourself because you get a plus one every time you try to solve any problem. Uh, a couple other things, just I'll mention some of these uh, player abilities. This one's kind of silly, but it actually uh, can be sort of beneficial. Uh, just if you get the yellow player, you get to go first, and that's it. Um, the blue player gets the power of invisibility, which is probably the best power out of all of them, I think. But there are cards, that, and there's quite a few cards, I would say, uh, that give you the same power as the invisibility. But she just kind of gets it built in. And what that is, is it basically lets you ignore moving through one of these uh, problem tiles there. So you can actually move through and even peek at the uh, face down purple ones if you want when you move through there. Uh, what are the other ones here? So the red one here, you start the game with one magic tile and one cackle counter. So uh, this is just, you can play this and it's basically just like playing a card for the plus two, uh, you know, for the bonus points there. But you get a built in cackle counter there. So, and you know, and like I said, you know, that's a pretty cool ability too. Uh, and, but everybody can kind of get those through the game. Now, this one here is interesting. You can start the game with the cure sick pick tile. And then once per game, you can automatically defeat a cure sick pig. So here's a sick pig right here. So you can discard that and then boom, you immediately get, it's only worth one point, but again, it's gonna start adding to your hand size. So just kind of little situational things there, nothing too drastic. And you can also play this uh, solitaire and you can play it co-op as well. But let me go back to the talking hand review there and give you my thoughts. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview. Uh, I actually quite like this game. And, uh, and if I had to compare it to more pork, um, hard to say which one I like better at this point. This one's still kind of new and fresh for me. Now the neat thing about this one, it's really neat, is you can play it competitively and you can play it uh, cooperatively. And that's really cool. Now the cooperative thing, it kind of works out sort of like pandemic in a way, because you have sort of these different routes that you're trying to go through and sort of, you know, squash these different diseases and, you know, different trouble that's going to happen. Uh, so it gets kind of interesting that way. Uh, now there's a lot of, I don't know if I call it luck, but there's a lot of probability figuring in this game. Uh, because you're going to have various, uh, you know, levels of difficulty on the board that you can try to defeat. You've got, you know, all the way from like a 7 to a 12, I think, on the easy ones. And then the harder ones are right around, I think it's 15 to like 22 uh, is the higher end one. So you can pick and choose. I mean, you can be silly and go for a 22 or something or go for a hard one when you've only got a three card hand. And, you know, you don't really have that good of cards or anything. Um, but you basically you kind of build yourself up because you're going to get a lot more cards, build up your little engine, and then you can really try to try to play through your hand and gather up some of those power of three cards. Uh, you know, kind of you know you get some plus twos to the encounters and get rid of those and defeat some easy ones. And then okay, I've got one power three. Now I've got two. Now I've got three. Now I can go defeat anything I want on the board. And then you kind of use that and spend that and get your nice you know five or six point tile there. Uh, so that's kind of interesting the way these mm, it's very wallacy you know kind of way you've got these sort of key locations on the board and people are sort of trying to build up a little bit of an engine and then try to go race and grab those and i like the flavor of the game in general i mean the arts and the illustration is cool and i like some of the different uh negative effects uh, that happen when you know you defeat you, or you fail to defeat some of the uh the harder purple ones uh, and it's got a cool kind of hand management in the sense that more pork does where you kind of you know You're mostly kind of blowing through your hand every turn But in this there's a little bit more probability figuring uh, So and whereas more pork is definitely more of a deduction game because you're trying to figure out you know who the other players are um, But like I said, it's cool and the co-op actually works. I play the co-op and I play the competitive 
and I think I like the competitive better just because I kind of I tend to be more of a competitive gamer but the co-op's really neat um, so and there's some things you can do to tweak with the difficulty level and you're gonna change it up a little bit based on how the players how many players there are and things like that but it is an interesting game. It's definitely on the lighter side, but it still gives you like some, you know, you've got to kind of chew on where you're supposed to go, where the most optimal route to go is. And, you know, and you, like I said, you've got that little bit of engine building and things like that. And so it's really cool. I really like the art and all the different witch characters and stuff are really cool. They're kind of individualized. And, uh, and I, I should say, I'm kind of a Discworld fan. I read a couple of books uh, when I was in high school, I think. And I, they were very enjoyable. I'm not a huge Discworld person. This part of Discworld I'm not familiar with. I'm more familiar with this, you know, more pork and uh, the different wizards and, you know, bumbling inner workings of the city kind of thing. So that one kind of strikes home more for me. Uh, but this is really cool. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a nice, even keel, light game that doesn't bore you to tears. A lot of times you get some of these light ones where it's like, ah, this is kind of you know, ho-hum, but this is interesting because you've got the sort of pressure luck a little bit with the dice rolling and uh, and the card play and stuff, you know, trying to dig through that deck and you know, get those right cards and things. So anyway, that's Witches. Uh, thanks.